What up, everybody? What's happening? What's happening? I'm trying to meet some jigs today, y'all. I was bored. It's raining all day, all weekend. I can't get out on the lake. So I said, let me holler at my people. See what they got going on and tie up, meet some jigs at the same time. And if y'all got any questions about jig time, I would definitely try to answer them. Definitely try to answer it. So that's my plan today is just to tie me some jigs. Get ready. For next weekend, hopefully it don't rain. And get on out on that water. What 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 y'all got going on today? Is anybody on the lake? Anybody going fishing? Or is everybody in the same bad weather that I'm in? That sucks so bad. I actually watch a lot of people tie jigs and mostly everybody tie jig differently. Like everybody tie jigs differently. But they all, you know, they all end up coming out, you know, beautiful looking jigs. And I think that's that's the best way to do it. You know, you find your own way on how you do it. And, you know, that what makes your jigs different than everybody else's. And this is the way I do mine. I like this Chanel right here. Y'all check this Chanel out. This is some dope looking Chanel. I like it. It looks just like some bait fish. 351 Cleveland, Crappie Red, Mike Turner. What it do, what it do. So I kind of like this Chanel, so. I want to do some all gray. Y'all know all gray, in my opinion, all gray is like the most versatile hand tie color you can use. Because it works just about everywhere and anywhere. So, you know, you got different, you know, different types of gray and all of that. But like I said, I painted me some jig heads this morning, probably about 100 different colored jig heads. So I said I might as well. Tie me up some jigs too. And if y'all got any questions, any questions, you know, feel free to ask. Feel free to ask. I hope y'all enjoyed the live last night. I definitely hope y'all enjoyed the live last night. Um, you know, one thing for sure when you come on the live, we gonna always keep it one thigh while. At all times, whether people like it or not, we're going to always keep it 1,000. Talk to know us, have some fun, and that's just what it is. You know? You know, some people would rather, you know, stay quiet and, you know, don't talk about issues or whatever, but that's not who I am. So, and it is what it is, you know? You know, it is what it is. I think that thing gonna go catch some crap. What y'all think? Y'all think this gonna go catch some crap? I think that one go catch some crap right there. That thing might go crazy. Oh, uh, let's see who up in this thing. Camo Joe, what's going on? Chat Jock Willie Farm. He said, "What's up, man? We are coming uh, to uh, late March. Okay, we have caught crap off your jigs here in Alabama already, Willie. Man, I so appreciate it, fam." I sure appreciate it. D. Brown said, what advice is that OG if you don't mind me ask? Oh, I don't mind at all if I knew the name. Atlas. It's an Atlas Vice. It was actually, uh, I got it a couple years ago, my fam, Yarley Kennedy, uh, birthday gives me one. He has the same one. I went to his house and I, I was like, man, I like that Vice. And he surprised me and bought me one for my birthday a couple years ago and I can't put it down. I love it. It's an Atlas Vice. A-T-L-A-S. Atlas Vice. 
Uh, I don't know if you can see the whole thing. It has a little stand right there and all that good stuff. But I love this vice. I love it. The stand is real heavy too and sturdy. But I absolutely love that vice. I love this vice. Make life so much easier. And it's a rotary vice, which I would tell anybody, if y'all going to do vices, make sure you get your rotary vice. Meaning, you know, you can just, you know, all that good stuff. Squiddle said, raining in the East Texas. Hope to hit Merval later. Yeah, man, it's raining all over East Texas and Southeast Texas. I'm sick. I am sick. I'm sick, 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 sick. Camel Joe said, peace to the chat. Already, already. Yeah, I'm sick. I would love to be out on the lake today, especially after uh, being out in East Texas last weekend and catching all them cropping. I would definitely, love, I would love to be back in East Texas, honestly. Uh, but that rain don't want to play fair. So I said, I might well get myself prepared. Y'all know the spun right around the corner. You know, everybody loves the spun. I love the spun. Uh, it just find where they're spawning at. You know, a few people hate the spun. And, and I, it, there, there have been times when I did hate the spun also. Because, um, believe it or not, the spun can be challenging. Especially if you're on a new lake. So, I know I've been to new lakes and went out there and I was like, man, I hate the spun. I can't wait till the spun is over with. But at the same time, I've been on those like when I've you know put some time in on those lakes and, and started to figure stuff out, I started falling in love with those same lakes. So uh, the spun can be challenging, but once you find them in the spun, you ain't got to go nowhere. From the bank, on a boat, wave fishing, it don't matter. You find them cropping the spun, and you are gonna have an epic day. But uh. I'm real big on uh, deer belly hair too, y'all. If y'all wondering what kind of tail I use, I know a lot of people use uh, marabou or they use the hackle and different stuff like that. But I'm big on the belly hair. I know I used to use a lot of deer tail, but the belly hair is a lot shorter. Uh, like this is a lot shorter, and I like to make my tails short now. I know I used to tie a little long tails with that. Uh, with the uh, the deer uh, the bucktail or deer tail, but with that deer belly hair, I can trim it down some, getting a little, get it a little shorter. And for me, the shorter jigs, I actually catch more fish on them. Get I guess because of the smaller profile. And you know that's not always the case, but ever since I've been using uh, deer belly hair and then trimming that down and making the jig shorter. I've definitely been, it's definitely like for me, for me, it's a night and day difference than using the whole, the whole tail on the uh, deer hair, on the deer belly hair. Then I get my Chanel. I use two little strands and I double them up like twice. Then I cut them thing. I double it up twice, cut them. And so I try to get my Chanel just a little bit longer than than the tail, just the hair, just the hair longer. They are almost the same length. I like to use a lot of flash too. It's something about using a lot of flash. I know some people use just a little bit of flash and all that. I like to use a lot of flash. I like flash. I think it, it attracts the, the, the crappie more. Give them, you know, a lot more to see. And I just like to use a lot of it. And so that's what I do. Use a lot of flash. It's like even in the Chanel. The Chanel has flash in it. So. And that's basically the route I'm going right now anyway. Until the until the cropper tell me otherwise. Now when the cropper tell me, look, we don't like them. We don't like your jigs no more. And then I will start going another route. But for now. But for now, uh, this is the route I'm going short uh short belly deer belly hair tail with with just a you know a little chanel and a lot of flash and that's the way i like it i don't like to cut the tail either to make it flat i like to keep the tail natural i'll show y'all what i mean on the next year i like to keep that tail kind of natural put a little glue on that knot and i'll show y'all what i mean when i say i like to keep the tail natural 
Uh, let's see, can y'all see that? So that, that tail, I don't cut the tips off the tail right here. I don't cut it off, I leave it pointed. And I just put that Chanel just a little bit longer. And uh, as y'all can see, that thing, I think that thing gonna catch some crap. If you add me, I think that thing gonna catch some crap. I really do like that. I'm gonna tie one more of those. So what I like to do, I like to, I like to whenever I'm doing the color, because it's happened to me too many times on the lake, where I only have like one or two colors, and the crop it really love that color, and then you know I get break off a couple of times, get hung up, break off or whatever, and then I ain't got no more of that color. So what I do now is I, I tie four to six, four to six uh, jigs of each color, and then once I find out you know a certain color that they do like. You know, I go back home and I tie a few of them, you know, maybe 10 or something like that. Like that, that color I showed last night on live, that Mardi Gras color. I, um, I don't know, I probably got about 15 to 20 of those now. Just because I know last three trips on Sam Rayburn, they have fallen in love with that Mardi Gras jig that I, I named it Mardi Gras. But that Mardi Gras jig, they have fallen in love with it the last three trips. So... The next time I go, I know I definitely have enough of them. So I'm gonna show y'all what I do when I. So this one I, I, I pull that that deer belly hair, pinch it off, just the whole piece of it. To me, that's too long. So what I would do is I probably take half of that off. Take half of it off. Now we got half of the deer belly hair. Turn that thing around. Keep it all together. Sometimes you gotta trim it up some more. I try to have it even the part that I cut off. Push it all the way up to the top of the jig head. Go about halfway down the shank of the hook. I don't like to go all, I used to go all the way down to the bend. But like I said, I, I like to start making it shorter now, not as long. So I go halfway of that shank of the straight part. I go halfway on it. That's the tail right there. Just the kind of Chanel I use, the little strings. I get two strings. One. Oh, that one didn't want to come out. There it is. Two. I get two strings of Chanel. And they long. So I double it up. I double up that Chanel. Fold it in half, basically. And I cut it. Then I fold it in half again. Kind of make sure it's kind of even. I fold it in half again and cut it. Now you're gonna have a lot of flash on both sides. Grab both ends of the Chanel, line it up, put it about halfway, line it up together so both sides are even. Then I uh, cinch it down, put some good old thread. I, not all I use is sewing thread too, y'all. I use regular sewing thread. Uh, and then I line up that tail with the flash, and I, like I said, I try to leave that flash just a hair longer than the tail. Then we come with that Chanel. Put that Chanel on there. When you're doing your Chanel, whichever way your thread going, you want to tie, you want to put your your Chanel on the opposite way. So if I'm going this way with my thread, I'm going the opposite way with my Chanel. I just I just eyeball it to fill it in. Sometimes I want it real full. Sometimes I want them thin. So I just eyeball it, fill it in. Whichever my last pass is, I put one line. I go over it one time with the thread. Sometimes I go over two times with the thread on the last pass of Chanel. Get your whip finisher. I don't even feel like explaining to y'all how the whip finisher go. You just have to watch some of my videos. There's a lot of other videos on YouTube also that show you how to use that whip finisher. Some people don't even use the whip finisher, but to me it's easier. Hit that whip finisher about three, four, five times, something like that. Cut that thing. Flip that thing upside down. Put a little glue on that knot. You don't have to put the glue on the knot if you're using that whip finisher, really. But I still like to secure that knot with a little glue. And that's just the way it goes. Come on, listen, I was just about to say, looks like you want a smaller profile. Yep. Emerald Shiner. It might be the name of it. 
See, Camo Joe, you know too much. You know too much. That's actually the name of y'all. Emerald, dark emerald shiner. And that is a bad color. I'm telling you, it's a bad color. As bad as I'm good. It's a great Chanel. Theo said, it looked good. You will catch Crocker with it. Most definitely. Most definitely. What, uh, hit, look, y'all. Here go SK. What you going to do different on Conroe to take the W? It ain't nothing different I'm going to do. Me and Conroe don't get along. So, I'm putting my head down and just fish. Me and Conroe do not get along. I'm not looking forward to fishing Conroe. I'm looking forward to fishing the other East Texas lakes, honestly. I'm looking forward to every lake but Conroe. And I'm sure I can go out there and catch 25 crappie on Conroe. But the thing about it is catching those big salmon. And I ain't even putting enough time on Conroe. But I'm going to have to hopefully uh, soon uh, when this rain is gone. So hopefully next weekend I can get out there the full weekend on Lake Conroe and try to figure something out. But I'm, not, I'm definitely not looking forward to fishing Lake Conroe at all. I've been here nine years. I've been here nine years, and I probably fished Conroe seven times, maybe eight times. So that shows you how much I feel about Conroe. But I'm had to figure something out. I'm definitely had to figure something out. Okay, much that's flash. He said, "Yeah." SK said, "I seen your boy out there yesterday." Yeah, I talked with him yesterday. I talked with him yesterday. Um. He said he got on some pretty good fish. I got to go out there and find me some pretty good fish, too. Because uh, it ain't looking good. Like I said, I ain't, I ain't put no time. I've been out, I've been in East Texas. I've, I've been enjoying fishing in East Texas, and especially Sam Rayburn, that I really don't care nothing about going to Conroe. But I have to figure something out there. Um, like I said, the catching the fish part is not the hard part. It's catching the big seven, not catching the fish. So... That is my big thing is catching big salmon, not catching big fish. I can, I, I'm sure I can go catch some big fish, but I need to go catch me seven big ones. I can go catch some fish, but some fish ain't gonna work. That's one thing about tournament fishing. Some fish, some fish don't work. <laughs> you need big fish, so. Said yesterday was 12 to 14 feet was the ticket for the good ones. Yeah, I, that, I, that, you know, that's, that's the depth I like. I don't like to fish nothing over about 16 feet of water anyway. But uh, I know with all this fresh rain coming in, I'm sure it's going to be a little muddied up, which I'm starting to like this mud because to me it's easier fishing. The fish are less spooky in the mud than they are when the water's, the clarity of the water is a little bit better. So, uh, but I don't know. I know it's going to be a lot of rain by the time I get there next next weekend. Because, I mean, we're calling for rain today, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So, that means that's a lot of days of rain. So, they might have a current going on. Hopefully, the current has slowed down by Saturday when I get out there. Uh, Chat Josh said, what paint you got on those gray jig heads? I have Disco Silver. Disco Silver. I love disco colors. I, I bring a couple of them out. But it's the disco silver. It's kind of like a metallic silver. I got that. And I also painted some disco gold, which is starting to be one of my favorite color jig kids also. That's that disco gold. See the metallic flake in it? So, yeah, that's what I got. Disco silver and disco gold. I, I, painted, I have some new paint that I've never used that I had about a year. It's called something something watermelon. I don't know if y'all can see the actual color of it because it looks black, but it's not. It's like a watermelon color, something watermelon. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do something something fun with that color too. Um, got some candy pink. I was doing different bases to try to make the candy really come out in that pink. It's still to me like a hot pink, but this is candy pink. I did a, a hot pink base. So I dipped it in hot pink first, and then I dipped it in the candy pink. I did white. White really brings out the candy in it, but it's too thick sometimes. Um, so I, I tried. I know I painted it before with uh, 
with a white base. And then I dipped it in the candy paint and it really glowed. Like it would look like it was glowing. So this morning I said, well, let me try a different color. Well, yesterday I started painting yesterday. So yesterday I went with a uh, hot pink base. Then I dipped the candy pink in it and it came out pretty good. I mean, I still like it. So, uh, yeah, I got a few colors that I'm playing with. Ted Jocelyn, is it, is it a clear holographic metallic metal? Metallic. No, uh, I'm not sure. Let, matter of fact, let me go find it. Nah, it's just a regular disco silver. Disco silver. Mostly all my paints is Protect. This is by TJ's Tackle. TJ's Tackle, if y'all check out TJ's Tackle, TJ's Tackle got a lot of different colors. He has some amazing powder paints, but it's Protect paint. Mostly all of my, I think all of my paint, I probably got 40 different paints. And they're all by Protect, so I like Protect paint. But this is from TJ's type of Protect Paint. And then it's just regular Disco Silver. I don't know if I can show it to you without wasting it. But, uh, yeah. I don't know if y'all can see that. But you can see the little flakes in it. But one thing about, I'm going to tell you one thing. If you want to paint jig heads, you want to Because I have probably every Disco color you can use. I got Disco Blue, Disco Red, Silver, uh, Gold, Orange, Chartreuse. One thing when you're dealing with disco colors, when you paint your jig heads, when you do about one to two of them, if you if you paint them straight out of the cup and you don't have a fluid bed, make sure you keep stirring it up so it don't, because it'll get some of those flakes. Once you dip it a couple of times, those flakes will start to settle. So once you paint about one or two, get you a plastic fork or anything and just, I just use this little Phillips head screwdriver and just stir it up to loosen it back up so it don't get compact. Cause once you loosen it up, you're getting some of those flakes. And sometimes you gotta double dip. It's so like on my metallics, I double dip them. And I'm gonna tell you the other secret too. When I do mm -hmm. my metallics, to really bring it out. To really bring that color out. Matter of fact, I think I had one jig head left that I didn't use to paint. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do my disco colors. One thing about disco colors, I will use a clear coat too. So this is just a pure, pure just clear coat protect paint, but it's a clear coat and it really brings that metallic flake out of those disco colors. I had a jig head. I had one single jig head that I didn't paint. I was gonna show y'all exactly how I paint my disco colors, but now I can't find that one single jig head. It's on the run. I guess he don't want to get used. I got to call my boy, too, um, Chris Guthrie, man. If y'all looking for some great jig heads, really no blemish, no blemishes in the jig head, just good full jig heads, holler at Chris Guthrie with Guthrie Tackle. Guthrie Tackle, that's my guy. Great guy, man. That's family, really. He's family, man, like a brother of mine. But he is a great guy, and he has great tackle. I'm going to paint one of them. Let me grab me a, grab me a jig head right quick. And I've been sticking with 116 too. I know everybody like to use different different weights. Uh, these are some 18s. But yeah, if you're looking for Guthrie Tackle, man, this check out Guthrie Tackle if you want them peel heads or regular G, any kind of jig heads you can think of. Uh, m mostly Guthrie Tackle got them, and that's my guy. So how let Guthrie Tackle hook y'all up? Uh, this this is actually one with the wire keepers. This is actually for my plastics. But I'm going to show you exactly how I do my, uh, show you exactly how, let me move this out the way, move this dirt belly hair out the way. Show you exactly how I do my disco colors. I shake them up first. Look, y'all, I actually found the jig head. There it is, that 116th I was looking for after I went and got some 18. So what I do is I stir it up first, loosen it all up. And 
I get my clear coat and I loosen my clear coat up. Uh, I do have a heat gun. It's too slow for me. So I don't like to use the heat gun. So I use a lighter. But when you're using a lighter, you have to be careful because you will heat up this um, this lid and it will drip and get hot and drip on you. That's what you don't want to do. And I, and I use torch lighter, so I have to be able to, this, I'm used to it, so you have to go pretty fast. So I heat up both sides of the jig head, basically. Then I will dip it, look at it, then I'll probably dip it again. Knock off the the access, then hit that clear coat one time. And see, look at that thing. That thing is glistening. That disc, that's any disco color, any disco color. If you really want to bring out the um, really bring out that metallic flake in it, that metallic uh, flakes and your disco colors. Uh, sometimes, like I said, it's all eyeballing. You gotta eyeball it. Um, sometimes you gotta double dip. Sometimes you can get it on that first dip, but you're dipping it real quick. You're not holding it down in there. You just dip it real quick, look at it, dip it again, shake off the excess, and then you uh, put you some clear coat on it. Dip one time in the clear coat, and you're good to go. I'll tell you another thing too. What will save you a lot of time when you paint your jig head, so you don't have to sit there and clean every eye out. So, and I can tell you, this works. 99% of the time get you some needle nose pliers grab that and cover up the eye hole where your line goes through then you heat your jig up and you dip it like that when you dip it like that you won't get paint in your eye and you ain't got to worry about putting you know I know some people like they cover them up to me that's time consuming and then you know I know I used to just have to dip them then have to go to each one and clean them out time consuming Get you some needle, needle nose pliers, cover up that eye where your fishing line goes through, heat up your jig head, and then dip them. And then your eyes are not going to get painted. In. Then you can go heat them, bake them, or whatever you got to do, and you never have to worry about cleaning out the eyes. That's actually a trick. My fam, Yardley, uh, Yardley Kennedy, he taught me that trick. I was at his house. He was painting I said, man, you ain't even got to clean your eyes out when you do that. He's like, yeah, man, this is how I do mine. And I'm so glad I was over there and he showed me that. Because I would never have to uh, clean another eye out of a jig head again. That sucks. You know, to, like I said, it's just time for some new gas. As I said, you got to go to Stubblefield to get in the muddy water. Yeah, you definitely got to go up to Stubblefield. I know I fished there a few times last year. I haven't been there this year. I heard there'll be some decent crappie. You know, pound and a half was pulled out of there, but I don't think uh, seven pound and a half is going to win it out there. So, and I'm sure they probably got some bigger crappie, but uh, he said, I don't think the tournament will be win there, though. Nope, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I don't think uh, Stubblefield is going to get you enough weight. You're going to have to fish that main lake. Chat Jock said, How do you get the eyes to stick to your disco paints? So, once you put that clear coat on it, once you put clear coat on Disco, it's just like any other paint. It's smooth. It's smooth just like doing a chartreuse head or any other paint. Like, it's going to be super smooth. So, I'm going to show you. There's no difference. I don't know if I can show it to you, if I can get close enough to show it to you. You see how smooth that looks? So, there's no difference between that head and that head. They both have smooth finishes now. That clear coat gives it a smooth finish. So if you want to put eyes on it, you can. Because that clear coat makes it smooth. It don't You don't feel that glitter, that metallic flake in it. So it's not that rough feeling. But that's only if you're using disco colors. Now if you're using like straight metallic colors, then it's going to be rough. Even if you put clear coat on it, it's still going to be rough. But if you're using disco colors, not just straight metallic, but disco colors, you can uh, use that clear coat. And it'll make it smooth just like any other jig head. Guarantee you. That comes from trial and error. Because I have a lot of metallic, straight metallic flake colors. And I've tried to put clear cut on them and they don't work. They're just going to be rough anyway if you have straight metallic. That's why I went to disco colors. Because disco have 
uh, some paint and flakes instead of just 100% metallic flake. They're just VHF. What's going on, brother? Uh, Camel Joe said popsicle sticks work good for sticks. Most definitely. For sure. For sure. For sure. That was, I just be grabbing anything. I have a plastic knife, plastic fork, screwdriver. I just want to mix it up so that it don't uh, kind of loosen it up. That's all I really want to do. Just loosen up the uh, loosen up the paint. So that chartreuse. Uh, I'm going to show y'all. Let me see. I don't know. Yeah, I do got some of this. I'm going to tell y'all my number one Sam Rayburn jig. This jig has caught in three trips. It's probably caught about 400 to 500 crappie in three trips. Uh, I threw a lot of them back, you know. I probably threw about 50 or 60 back in the tournament. Uh, when we had our tournament out there because I didn't need them. I, they were, weren't big enough. But this is the color last weekend. Like I said, we caught over 100. We did a two-day uh, trip last weekend, me and KP and his brother. We caught over easy over 100 crappie. Uh, but off, the, off this one jig, so I'm going to tie y'all and show y'all. So if anybody is in Texas or planning on going to Sam Raven, and you don't want to fish with minnows, which they bite minnows out there too. But we actually got minnows because it was raining bad. And I'm like, man, I don't really know. You know, this is only my third time coming to this lake. And it might fool me. But the last couple of times, just the jig they've been hitting. Pre-fishing in the tournament, it was just the color they was hitting. And so uh, we put minnows out there, caught one fish in about 30 minutes. Just messing with minnows. I said, man, look, y'all. I'm going to go to this hand tie that I've used the last couple of times. And it was... That who used all day. I think I had about eight of them, ten of them, and we we used them the whole two days. So, like I said, it's that deer belly hair. I like to use the ends of it, not the whole strand, because the jig will be way too long. So what I do is I pinch off, pinch off some, go down to the bottom of it, chop it off, and then you kind of eyeball how long you want your jig. Like I said, I don't like my jig to be long. So I'm cutting half of it off. I got me a little cup right here, a little plastic cup. And I just cut that part off. I look at it again. Still kind of long. So I cut a little bit more off. So I cut that part off. Put that, put that, that uh, the, the top of it all the way on the jig head. I'm only going halfway down. The shaft, like I said, I like my jig, jigs to be a little smaller, sh shorter then. Uh, so I only go halfway down the shaft. And I only use sickle hooks. I know a lot of people hate sickle hooks. I like them. They're just what I prefer. It's nothing against J hooks, but I just prefer sickle hooks. Uh, so now you got your tail on, your flash. I got some of this old chartreuse. This is the yellow. I have green chartreuse and I have yellow chartreuse. I like to use the yellow chartreuse uh, uh, flash. Like I said, I get two strands of it. We got one strand, two strands of it. That stuff's so small, you can barely see it. I line them up, fold it in half. Once you fold it in half, cut right down the middle so now you got four pieces then i fold it in half again i fold it in half again cut it now you got eight pieces so now you have four pieces on each side of that tail fold it up halfway cinch it down and i'm telling you if you're going to sam rayburn this is a killer Killer, 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 killer hand tie. So then I line it all up with the tail and the chenille. And I cut the chenille down because I only want the chenille a hair longer than the tail. Then the, the actual chenille that I use. It's called Fat Tuesday. I'm, I'm giving y'all these. I'm putting y'all on game. That's if you're fishing Sam Brave. It might, look, it might work at Jaw Lakes too. But this is Fat Tuesday. It's by Nimrod's Tackle. Mostly all my Chanel I get is from Nimrod's Tackle. Uh, it's called Fat Tuesday. That's why I named this jig the Mardi Gras jig. 
You know, they like to party in Mardi Gras. And the crappy love the party on this jig. I saw this Fat Tuesday Chanel. I'm going to call this Mardi Gras. I'm going to call this jig Mardi Gras. Because the crappy on Sam Rayburn love the party on it. Kind of untwist that Chanel. Man, this jig already look pretty. Put that Chanel on there. Uh, let's see. And then you, well, like I said, whichever way you're going with your 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 your, your line, your thread. If I'm going this way with my thread, you go the opposite way with your Chanel. And that's just how I do it. Now, everybody, I just I don't see ten different people tie jigs ten different ways, but this is the way I tie mine. You just fill it in, just eyeballing it, filling it in how you want to, if you want it thick or if you want it thin. Cut it off. Get, get your whip finisher. Put you about four, five, six knots in that thing. Cut that bad boy off. Flip it upside down. Some people use it, some people don't. I like to put a little glue on my knot. Uh got the type of glue this is but I buy from Bass Pro. I buy right from Bass Pro but they got all kind of glues. That bad boy ready to go catch some fish and I don't I don't even I haven't even been doing the eyes lately but that thing right there look, look how that flash looking in that tail look at that flash Ooh, wait and look at the flash in the Chanel That thing, they're ready to go catch some crap. I'm telling y'all, that thing is deadly. If you're going to Sam Raven, and even if you want to try it on your local lake, I know what lake it does work on. Uh, Chat Jock said, have you ever used Anise oil? I have. I've heard about it. I think I'm saying it right. Anise. 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 I've, I've heard about it, but I've never used it before. I've never used it before, but I've definitely heard about that oil. I heard it works great, you know, for scents. Um, but I haven't used it. Honestly, I haven't used it, though. But I've definitely heard about it. But yeah, that's that's my number one jig for, um, for old Sam Raper. I love that lake. I can't even stop talking about it. MC says, Skinny Ken, a.k.a. Gone with the Wind. What's going on, man? Man, I see you done came back from the deep. Yeah, man, I had to come on out, out, out the deep, man. I had, to, like I said, I've been really just concentrating on tournament fishing, just trying to better myself at uh, tournament fishing and uh, competitive crappie fishing. So a lot of times I've been driving a lot, being out of town. Uh, like I said, the closest lake we got is the tournament that's coming up February 11th on Conroe, and that's an hour and a half. Everything else I'm driving three to six hours or three to five hours. Uh, Sam Raven about three, three and a half. Toledo was like three and a half, four hours. Palestine about four, four and a half hours. Um, Merval is about four hours. And then we're going to go to the lake. The last two lakes are Lake Fork and Lake of the Pines. I think Lake of the Pines is like five hours for me. And Lake Fork is like four and a half hours. So it's a lot of driving, a lot of traveling uh, to pre-fish and try to figure out lakes that you never fished before. So I really just been concentrating on it once. The season is over with. I would definitely be putting out a lot of videos on Sam Rayburn because that's probably going to be the lake I'm going to be on uh, after the season is over with. I'm going to be dropping videos back to back to back. Chad Jackson, man, I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad you're back. I you got married and put us down. Nah, no, man. Nah, no, man. I, like I said, I've been concentrating on this, on this tournament fishing, bro. I've really been concentrating on tournament fishing. You said camo get... Get your money. You're going to hit the lake soon. I hear Clear Lake heating up. I heard that. That's one lake I've heard about. I don't know nothing about the West Coast lakes, but that's one lake I definitely hear about is Clear Lake. Mr. B. Come on, a very nice profile. Looks slabbish. <laughs> you heard it here first. I already, I already. Change your address at my Mississippi brother. What's good? I've been trying your jigs this year. Finally got. My left hip replacement ready to run on top of them water. Yes, sir, man. I'm glad you uh I'm glad you done shook back, man. It's nothing like being on that water. Nothing like being on that water. So I'm glad you done shook back, brother. And you're getting back in getting back in good fishing health. 
to get on out on that water and, 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 and hang some of them shla Mississippi slabs. MC said, all good, man. Good to see you doing well, man. I hope you're getting them plaques. No, I haven't, man. Uh, we have some real good, real tough competition. Uh, and that's what I like, though. I like to compete against guys that I know have no lakes, know these, you know, have fish lakes longer than I have. And, uh, you know, they know a, a lot more or a little bit more or a lot more than what I know about these lakes and uh, techniques. So um, I ain't got close to winning. But I'm definitely enjoying every second of it because I know that is definitely making me a better angler. Just being out there with some of the, some guys that are pros, you know, um, the first time of the year we fished against Jordan Sanders, and he's a well-known crappy guy. I mean, everybody know who Jordan Sanders is. Um, we fished against him uh, in Palestine. He actually won. He he won. He's he's the real deal. He won Palestine in our first tournament this season. Uh, Tommy Ezell, another well-known guy. Um, I think he's second place in Angle of the Year. Rod Silman, Sam Parker. Like, these are big-time guys that win, that win. And uh, I think Rod Silman and Sam Parker, they're number one so far in the Angle of the Year race. Them, them boys, they, they got a mean stick on them. They handling business. So, uh, yeah, I'm just enjoying being out there with these guys. A lot of these pros and, and guys that really, you know, that really do, do this. Uh, tournament stuff, man. I, I like to sit there and chit chat with them, talk some noise with them, and pick their brain. Because by me picking their brain, I think that's making me a better angler because I'm coming out of my comfort zone now and doing things that I've never done when it came to crappie fishing. You know, I would have never thought, you know, I'd be in a fiberglass boat. You know, I was fine with my aluminum boat. And then, you know, I started seeing like, man, fiberglass boat, heavier boat. So it's kind of easier boat control. It won't be as bad in the wind as an aluminum boat that I had. Uh, you know, getting a bigger motor that I can uh move around, you know. Now I'm driving 65, 70 miles an hour on the lake. While well, I'm compared to driving 25 to 27 miles an hour on the lake, uh, 30 miles an hour on the lake. So just getting the spots faster, uh, even just staying on a trolling motor, fishing fast, like all of these things were things before I started tournament fishing that I didn't do. You know, I I would go into the lake, find me some brush piles, sit on top of them, and try to pick them apart. Now, um, what I've learned is the more water you cover on that trolling motor, motor, the better chances you have to uh, place well in the tournaments. And also, uh, don't count nothing out. You know, don't count. Don't go there and be like, well, I ain't going to fish in the shallow water. I'm going to stay in this 25 or 20 feet of water. Or I ain't going to fish in brush piles. I'm just going to fish in standing timber. Or saying, hey, I'm just going to fish standing timber. I'm going to pass by these brush piles. It's basically just having an open mind. That's one thing about tournament fishing is tournament fishing, you have to have an open mind. Don't count out nothing. Don't count out shallow water. Don't count out deep water. Don't count out muddy water. Don't count out clear water. Don't count out brush piles. Don't count out standing timber. Don't count out roaming fish. Like, you have to be versatile in crappie fishing, and you can't count out anything. And that's something that I'm learning, still learning today. And also, uh, since live scope, knowing the fish, if you got seven fish and you see a dot on your live scope, knowing to pass over those fish that you don't need. Like looking at a dot, like, oh, that's a 125. I, I, my smallest fish I have is a 150. Why am I wasting time to drop on this 125 when it ain't going to do me no good? And that's something I'm still trying to break to this day. Because in my mind, I be just wanting to catch fish. I'm like, man, that's a 125. I know I don't need them, but I want to feel that thump. And so that's one thing that I'm, I'm learning, still learning right now, is passing by the fish that I don't need. And that's a hard thing for me because I like to catch every fish I see. But passing by the fish that I don't need is one of the main things I'm learning now. Mr. B. Uh, MC said, Kenny, there's more than just Clear Lake, but it's the most popular. Those pics I sent you was from my home lake. That's on the southern end of California. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure y'all got more than Clear Lake, but I know I just hear a lot of people on the West Coast talk about Clear Lake because it's a popular lake. Uh, just like if you go to Mississippi, you're going to hear about Grenada. You're not going to hear about all the other lakes. Uh, you know, you hear about Grenada, maybe Sardis, uh, Arca Butler, maybe. Uh, but it's a lot more lakes in Mississippi where you can't do good also. Uh, Change address said that live score has changed the game. Now you can target big fish. That is a fact, man. That's a fact. 
And the thing about it too, what I've learned also, being able to target big fish is keeping your live scope at a certain depth and a certain uh, forward, forward view so you can start understanding how big the fish are. Because if you're changing your depth, if you're changing your forward view all the time, all day, you really ain't going to be able to determine. Because I know we've all, anybody has a live scope, know that we've seen fish when we had it 15 feet forward and 20 feet down. We're like, oh, this is a monster. And you pull him in and he's barely a pound. And we've had fish, well, you know, we've had it 40 feet out and 25, 30 feet down. We're like, oh, this is like a little throwback. You hook him and he's a monster. So I think uh, I know one thing I do know is by it being deep water, it's you know when you when you're going down there at 30 and 40 feet of water, you really can't tell the difference. But uh, when you're keeping it at 20 feet down and just playing with your forward view and getting it to where you know the size of those crappie, that's what it's that's really how you can really target big big crappie. Uh, it's just knowing knowing your settings, knowing your settings. JJ, what's going on? I need to be out on your lake, JJ, but they won't let me fish out there this weekend. Uh, Cropper said, curious, what gauge wire are you running on your strings? Uh, I think I don't have a big gauge. I think I might have like eight, like eight gauge wire. I don't have no thick gauge. Just because I don't have a lot, like my, from the end of my wire to my battery is maybe this far. <laughs> So I keep my wires close to my battery so I can get that that, that, that power right there. I don't, I'm not running power from one end of the boat to the other end. Nah, I don't do that. Uh, I mean, if you can do that, but you definitely got to go with a lower gauge wire. And if people don't know about wire, the lower the number, the bigger the wire. So, I mean, if you got four gauge, it's going to be pretty big. I mean, I used to hook up radios. So I, I did a lot of systems in my day. Hundreds of vehicles I would put systems in. So I know a lot about this wire stuff. Um... So, but no, I have my batteries right up there in the front of my boat. My batteries are in the front of my boat in one of my compartments. So the distance from my screen, the wire, the power wire to my screen to my battery is probably a foot, if that, probably not even a foot, probably about eight inches. And my black box, my black box is damn near laying on top of my battery, not laying on top, literally, but it's probably six inches from the battery. So I got my hookups, my wires right there on my battery so I don't have to run you know, thick wire to get that consistent power. I just run shorter distances to, uh, but I think I run like eight gauge wire, nothing major. Now, if I was running that wire all the way to the back of the boat by the motor, then I'll probably go with a six gauge or a four gauge. And if I mean four gauge is some pretty thick wire too, so I'll probably go like a six gauge or something. But me knowing better, I could, and I having a lot of compartments on the front of that boat, I just put it in my front compartment, put my batteries up there in that front compartment where I can just put Run my batteries, my wires right there. Don't have a long distance to run them. And I can put them right there. Marco said, what's your favorite color to use? I like blue and chartreuse and pink and chartreuse. Oh, uh, right now, depend on the lakes. It depends on the lake. Like I, I just actually just tied this. I don't know if you was on early, but I just tied this one. This is my favorite. Um... Man, I just want to bite that jig right there. That's my favorite uh, uh, Sam Raven color. This color has been amazing on Sam Raven. Like I said, I've caught five to 600 crappie in three trips with this <laughs> with this jig right here. So that's my favorite Sam Raven color. Um, I tell everybody, everybody know how I feel about uh, new lakes or lakes that I, I, I haven't been on a lot. It's the most versatile color in my opinion is gray. So that's that's my gray right there. That's the gray I go with. It's an emerald shiner Chanel with that flash in it. Then I got the gray tail, silver flash, and metallic disco silver head. So gray, uh, I won't say gray is my favorite color, but it's my go-to color when I'm on a new lake. I'm going to drop a gray down. Before I drop anything, else, then I'm just going to start. If the gray is not working, then I'll just start going through other colors. But um that that I call it the Mardi Gras. My Mardi Gras jig is my favorite jig for Sam Raber. Uh, depending on what lake I'm on, if I'm on if I'm on Lake Somerville, I'm probably gonna go with something like a blue chrome. Uh, Lake Houston, you just never know. <laughs> Lake Houston, you just never know. Um, they might like something one day, and 
two hours later, it might like something else. Lake Conroe, same thing. Some most of these lakes uh, down here, closer to uh, in the Houston area, you you probably ain't gonna use one color all day. You want to you want to go through a few different colors. Now, when you get to East Texas, you a lot of those lakes you can go with one color all day and you good. But uh, down here in Southeast Texas, you're probably gonna be changing up two, three, four, five, six, seven colors in, in one day of fishing. So. Uh, JJ said, SK on here giving you tips on Conroe. Look, I'm gonna need more than tips. <laughs> I told you, I don't, I don't, I just don't like Conroe. And, you know, it's, I like to go fish for bluegill. That's the only reason I go to Conroe. I go to Conroe to, to catch bluegill because they have some huge bluegills out there. Other than that, I, I don't go to Conroe to crappie fish. I do not go to Conroe to crappie fish, but I didn't mind fishing in the tournament because. I don't have to drive three to six hours to a lake. I can go drive an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half and get there. So that's a plus. MC said, Kenny, with the standing timber, Kenny, with the standing timber, I'm noticing larger fish sitting more on particular types of timber compared to others. Yeah. Believe it or not, yes. Believe it or not, yes. Um, a lot of those East Texas guys are going to tell you they love boat art. They love Bodark. They love Bodark. They love Bodark. They love Bodark. They love, and I don't know if I should be saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. A lot of them East Texas guys and Northeast Texas guys, they love Bodark standing timber. Uh, they hold big fish, and it's facts. It is facts. It is facts. As Jerry Hancock, he'll tell you about them Bodarks. Um, Kevin Rogers put out a little video. A few weeks ago, he I think he was on Fork or either Lake of the Pines. And he was talking, it was funny because he was talking about Bodark. So you see that tree right here? He actually got it in his video. I'm like, you see that tree right there? That is a Bodark tree. And I'll pull some slabs off of it. So some about Bodark trees in Texas. The crappie love them. Big crappie, they love them. So I don't know why. Maybe somebody else can can enlighten me. Because I'm I'm fairly new to standing timber fishing, but I love it. That's the only way I want to fish. But I know that's not the only way I can fish. Uh, but I love fishing standing timber. Um, but like I said, I'm only about a year in to fishing standing timber. I know some guys are very experienced on it. And maybe they can enlighten me on why do crappie in East Texas love boat art trees. I do not know. Marco said, Gray usually catch more bluegill for me. Really? Really, man, I can't. I honestly, I'm excited about this summer, man. I'm gonna do me a lot of bluegill fishing this summer. Uh, Change address said, bro, are, you, are there any lakes in Dallas you recommend? I don't know nothing. I've never fished a lake in Dallas. I've never fished a lake in Dallas in the Dallas area, so I I can't give you no pointers. I I, I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction. I want to say, yeah, man, you can go out of Lake Tawakin and then you go out there and be like, man, this lake suck. Or go to Lake Louisville or go to Lake Arlington. Or, I know the lakes up there, but I've never fished one. So I definitely don't want to give you no bad information. Because a, a Dallas guy might get out here and say, man, Kenny Ken don't know what the hell are you talking about. Don't go to that lake. That lake trash. I don't know nothing about Dallas lakes. I know, I know the name of them, but uh, I've never fished no Dallas lakes. I've fished East Texas and Southeast Texas. JJ said, uh, tip for fork, find the boat arcs. That's, that's a fact. That is a fact. That is a fact. I, I've heard that from several people. If you go on the Lake Fork, find some boat arc trees and have fun. If you go on the Lake Fork, find you some boat arc trees. If you don't know what boat arc, how a boat arc tree look, go and Google it and see how a boat arc tree looks. When you see a boat arc tree, if you're on Lake Fork, drop a jig down there and hold on for the ride. Why? I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what about that certain tree that attract big fish. I do not know. But this is only what I've researched and what I've heard from, pe from people that I know caught big fish off of boat arcs. I don't know why. Cropper is it. Bob Sandlin is my home. Like, oh, really? So I know you have enough. You have enough. I feel they up there. I, I heard Bob Sandlin is on fire right now. 
Oh, Bob Sandlin. That is by... Mm. What is this? Another lake right there beside Bob Sandlin. Basically connected to it. Uh... What's that other little Cypress Springs or something like that? I think it's Cypress Springs Lake or something that's attached to Bob Sandler. Or it pours into Bob Sandler. Or something like that. I'm, I'm not really sure. Like I said, I'm, I'm new to East Texas. The far East Texas and Northeast Texas, I'm new to it, but I love it. From the lakes I've been to, the, let me see, I've been, yeah, Cypress Springs, yeah. I fish Cypress Springs. And there's a lot of crappie in there. There's a lot of boat traffic during the summertime. That was my buddy. My buddy, he's from there. That's where he stays. Uh, 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 Chris Guthrie. Guthrie tackle. I buy all my jig heads from. I'm a tackle from. And if y'all looking for any great jig heads or great tackle, holly at Guthrie tackle. I promise you, you great customer service. He get it to you quick. I've never waited over four or five days for anything I've ordered from him. Never. Uh, most times it's in two or three days. Three days is like the max. But... Or if you're looking for any kind of tackle, jig heads, internet, holler at Chris Guthrie at Guthrie Tackle. He stays out there at Cypress Springs. He actually invited me up there, and I went up there. Me and Yarley went up to um, Cypress Springs, man, showed us a great time. We caught a lot of crappie. It's a lot of fish on that summer gun, but it's best to go in the wintertime because that's summertime. It's a, it's a it's definitely a recreational lake, but I've heard Bob Salmon is an awesome lake, and I know that. Cypher pours into Bob Sandlin. I heard Bob Sandlin is the standing timber lake. So hopefully one of these days uh, I get on up on Bob Sandlin and fish some of that standing timber because I heard it's an awesome lake. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to all East Texas lakes. East Texas lakes are amazing to me. It's amazing. I think they give in any, any, any place in the U.S., East Texas will give them a run for their money when it comes to quantity. Quantity, good quality, quantity property. Uh, like I said, if you're talking about strictly quality, Mississippi is the place to be. If you want them three pounders, three and a half, four pound crappie, go to Mississippi. If you want a lot of two and a half, two pound crappie, you want to catch abundance of them, you want to catch limits, go to East Texas. Lake Cypress, that's it. Lake Cypress is the main is the name. Yep. Yep, I fished that lake. I fished it uh was that October? I think it was October of last year. If it wasn't October, maybe September of last year. And I had an amazing time. We caught a lot. Of, it was me, uh, me, Yarley, and Chris was on the boat together. And we had an amazing time. Chris put us on some spots out there, and we had a field day. A field day of crappie. And them crappie are hungry out there, and they are hidden, and they thump hard. And I enjoyed myself so much. Um, that's, that's another lake that I fell in love with. And I only been there one time. But that's an amazing lake also. It's just a lot of, it's, it's a lot of traffic in the summertime. Camo Joe said, I only get my jig heads from Guthrie Tackle and Lemmish Tackle, clean, lead, and strong hooks. That's the main thing with me. I love my jig heads to be clean and smooth. I know I've ordered jig heads before I started uh, ordering from Chris back in the day. I was just ordering them off of eBay and stuff like that. And they had craters all in it, so you had to heat it up and try to form the head. No, if I'm paying for jig heads, I want mine to be smooth and clean. And I know I've never had an issue with uh, Guthrie Tackle when it comes to me ordering my jig heads, ever. It's always clean, smooth, great. Like I said, great guy. He's family to me. Uh, and so I, I do all my business with him, man. I do all my business with him. Cropper Red said, Lake Fork to the west, Lake Fork to the east. I'm in the middle. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know exactly where you at. Oh, I know. Like I said, I've been up there. I've, I've been up there. I know exactly where you at. Marco said, do you like fish and bridge pilots for crop? I don't. If you want me to be honest, I don't. I don't fish bridge pilings. The only way I fish bridge pilings is if I ain't caught a fish all day and I'm desperate. <laughs> I don't like to fish bridge pilings because everybody fishes them. Uh, not nothing against it. Nothing against it, man. You know, like I said, I'll fish them. If I ain't catching no fish nowhere else, I'm going to go and put that live, drop that live stuff on the bridge piling and uh, see what's going on down there. But no, I don't fish. I don't look forward to it. If I'm going to a lake, I don't go to a lake like, yeah, I'm going to go to this bridge. That's probably the last, I ain't going to say probably, that's the last thing on my mind is finding a bridge to fish uh, on the lake. But like I said, I will do it if I have to. I definitely will. Uh, 
So yeah, man, I was just jumping on for a minute, man. The um, uh, yeah, Lake of the Pine. I know you're right in between Lake of the Pine and Lake Fork. I know yet, crop red. But yeah, I was just jumping on, man, to tie a couple jigs, man. Let y'all see, uh, what my day is gonna consist of today is tying jigs. Since this rain, don't want to let up and don't want me to go outside and play. Uh, I'm be tying jigs all day. So until next time, it's your boy Skinny Kenny, the Bronze Star Bit Double Salute. I'm out.